Good evening, everybody. We'd all like to stand all over this sanctuary this morning, or this evening. <laughs> it's been a day. <laughs> all right. Well, let's go before the Lord in prayer this evening, and let's pray that the Lord would have his way and uh, minister to us tonight, that he would remind us for the reasons why we need to be thankful in this season. Amen. Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy, Lord. Thank you, God, for all your blessings, Lord Jesus, everything that you've done for us and in our lives, Lord. God, all the things that you're going to do, Lord, we praise you, God. We thank you in advance for that, Lord. God, we pray that you would move in this place tonight, that you would, oh God, minister to us tonight, God, that you would, Lord Jesus, strengthen us, oh God. Help us, Lord, tonight, God, to remember why we need to be thankful, God. Uh, remind us tonight, oh God, why we need to draw closer to you today, oh God. We pray that you would have your way tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving.
there's just something about the name of Jesus that when you speak it over your situation, speak it over whatever's going on, whenever you mention that name, there's a joy, there's a peace, there's comfort, there's healing, there's whatever you need, it becomes available. When you mention the name of Jesus, all things are possible. Hallelujah. Because he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. There is nothing that can just listen to him and not obey. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to go before the Lord in prayer here tonight. We have a few prayer requests. Uh, we need to pray for the Debbie Pettit family. Pray that the Lord would bring peace and uh, to the family and friends and anybody that knew her and knew this family. Pray that God would just move in that situation. Yeah. Brother and Sister Potts need prayer tonight. Uh, pray for Sister Henderson. Continue that uh, God would continue to heal and strengthen her as she recovers from that surgery. Amen. Uh, Mark and Linda Taggart need prayer tonight. The Jacks family, Chris and Georgia. Uh, Jack and Marilyn Sadler and little Kylie need prayer tonight. The Razor family, Shane, Angie, Jaden. I pray that God would continue to move in their family and continue to keep them safe and bring peace and strength to them. Amen. We love you guys. We miss you guys. Amen. We can't wait to see you back in church. Um, we need to pray for the Paula Alexander family. The Lord knows the need. Amen. And he is able to take care of it. Uh, the Rusnick family for salvation. Uh, Evelyn. Uh, Evelyn Holcroft needs prayer tonight. Uh, Tammy Williams, Irene Boyd, uh, the Calvert, Calvert family. Uh, Calvert family needs prayer. Uh, Cliff, uh, Brother Thomas, Amen. It's good to see you tonight, Brother Thomas. Amen. Praying for you both. Um, Sister Marquita Thomas needs prayer tonight. Uh, Tony Taylor, pray that the Lord would move upon them. And Sister Marilyn Rusnick needs a touch from the Lord tonight. And Marge Norman, Brother and Sister Bagley, continue that the, uh, praying that the Lord would continue to strengthen and bring healing. Amen. Uh, Sister Kaywood uh, needs prayers during this time. Uh, Brother Kaywood passed away. Uh, yesterday, we pray for Sister Kaywood and pray for the church up there that the Lord would bring peace and comfort to them and that he would minister in that situation. Uh, Sister Tanzel tonight needs prayer. Heather Gaskins family, um, they've been exposed to a virus and they need touch from God. Okay, this is Sister Debbie's, uh, one of her daughters. So we'll pray for that. We're praying for your, fa uh, their family, your family, Amen. God has it all under control. We'll trust in Him. We can all stand tonight. If you have a request that wasn't spoken tonight, just raise your hand. Represented by a lifted hand. If you're watching tonight and you have a need, we're praying for you as well. And go ahead and pray for that need. And we believe that God will work it out. Amen. Let's pray together, expecting God to move here tonight. Amen. In Jesus' name, Lord, we thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, we pray, O oh God, that you would, Lord Jesus, move upon, O oh God, the names and the families, O oh Lord, the individuals, God, that were mentioned here tonight. God, you know, O oh Lord, all the details of their situations, Lord. God, there is nothing that is impossible for you, God. We believe, O oh Lord, that you can move mountains, God, and you can heal the sick. You can, O oh God, bring comfort and peace to situations, Lord. God, we pray that you would do that right now, Lord. God, those needs that were represented by lifted hands and nods tonight, Lord. Maybe somebody watching online has a need right now in their life. God, I pray that you would bring strength and healing, O oh God, into the people's lives tonight, Lord, that you would bring peace and joy, Lord. God, in a time where it's difficult to maybe experience those emotions, God, we pray that you would, Lord Jesus, move upon this uh, community, move upon our families and our friends, Lord, our workplaces, God. I pray that you would, Lord Jesus, uh, 
give protection and healing to those that need it, Lord. God, that you would, Lord Jesus, uh, let uh, breakthroughs occur, Lord Jesus. Break bonds of addiction in people's lives, Lord. I pray, oh God, that you would move right now. Lord Jesus, we believe, oh God, and we are believing, oh God, for great things to happen, oh Lord, and we know that you are able to do it, God. We pray, oh Lord, that you would have your way in our lives tonight, God. Lord, that you would, oh Jesus, make a way where there is no way, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy, Lord, and we praise you, God. We lift you up and we glorify you, oh God, for you alone are worthy of all of our praise in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, we thank you, God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, well, it's great to be here this evening with all, with all of you. It's not Wednesday night, but hey, it's Tuesday night and uh, Thanksgiving's coming. I'm thankful to be in the house of the Lord tonight with my church family. Amen. God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, as the saying goes, right? Amen. God is so good, and we are so thankful for what he's doing in people's lives. Uh, and we believe that God's going to continue to do great things, and greater things are going to happen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Uh, I can get the uh, ushers to bring up the offering place tonight. Amen. Now, we don't have church tomorrow night because we're having it tonight, and there won't be any youth uh, event on Friday night due to the holiday. We want our uh, young people to spend time with their families and as much as they can right now. And um, we just pray that God would help everybody to have a good Thanksgiving. It's a little bit different, but God is good. Amen. And we'll get through this together. Amen. Um, Brother Brett, would you? Go ahead and pray for the offering, please. Amen. Ushers are going to uh, bring the place to you if you want to give in the offering tonight. All right, well, praise the Lord, everyone. Oh, praise the Lord, everyone. Praise God. We're so glad that you're here tonight. And that's not our normally scheduled uh, service, but uh, a few things. It's good to see Brother and Sister Bagley back in the house of the Lord. They were not well. Uh, good to see Brother and Sister Thomas. They were not well uh, this last Sunday. And it's good to see my wife here. Praise God. She's just she's hiding back in the corner. But uh, we're glad that she is here. She is uh, doing well, and uh, we're just thankful for that. Praise God. It's not every day that you, you get your hip replaced, and uh, we've only got two of them. So, praise God. I guess they could, could just keep changing it over and over and again. It's, I guess maybe it's like a Mr. Potato Head. You could keep changing them that way, but we hope not. Praise God. <laughs> a little bit of a chuckle in here. Praise God. <laughs> I'm probably in trouble after church. Hallelujah. It looks like she's uh, laughing, though. Yes, no. Good, she's laughing. That's good. Just can't, can't hear it from that far and can't see it with a mask on. Well, praise the Lord. Well, it is Thanksgiving this week, and we are so very thankful. We want to be thankful. And uh, I've got a couple more prayer requests that... Uh, left my phone in the car and just got them. So we want to uh, pray. Let me find it here. Brother Williams had a request for a uh, Cindy Lott. Uh, she's tested positive, and then uh, she is in Florida, and then also a young man, his name is Matt Benedrix. So we're, he's got some heart trouble and some very, very special requests. If we could just pray for these folks. Uh, Lord, in Jesus' name, we call on you right now, and we thank you. Lord, we're asking you that you would touch Cindy, God, that you would move in her body. And God, that you would touch Matt. We're so very thankful, Lord, God, for your touch in their lives. And we're asking you, Lord Jesus, oh, God, that you would touch and move in uh, these very special requests. 
Lord, that uh, Brother and Sister Williams had. We're just uh, asking you, Lord, to move in their way. And also, God, we're asking you to touch uh, Eric Davis, Lord, that you just keep your hand on him. In the name of Jesus, almighty God, uh, we just thank you, Lord, for your touch. In Jesus' name, amen. And uh, again, please keep uh, Sister Kaywood in your prayers. Uh, suffered the loss of Brother Kaywood, and uh, uh, what a treasure. What a treasure he, he was, and he still is. Uh, he's uh, one of those guys that's just larger than life. And uh, if you had the opportunity to know Brother Kelly Kaywood, he preached here many times. And, uh, you know, God brought us together. I was praying one day, and uh, I just felt like that the Lord laid it on my heart that we need an evangelist. And uh, God told me, he says, well, you go to Columbus, and you... There's, going to, there's, an, there's an evangelist up there. So I, I went there. I didn't know who it was. I went up to Brother, Brother Stark. Or maybe it was at the campground. I think it was at the campground. And I went up to Brother Stark, and I said, uh, are there any evangelists here? And he says, well, there's, there's a young man sitting over there. His name's Kelly K. Wood. I was uh, working at Kenworth still at the time, and it was late. It was heading towards 10, 30, 11 o'clock. and still had another 45 minutes to get home. And I walked over, and they introduced me to Brother K. Wood, and I I just said, uh, I hear, you, do you have any openings? He said, well, I'm open Sunday. And this was Wednesday. And I said, okay, we'll see you. Here's the address. I gave him my card, and I turned around and walked off. And uh, he didn't understand all of the things that was happening in our lives. And, and uh, he, you know, as, I, as we walked off, he, uh, I told him, I said, you can just give me a call if you need anything, but we'll, we'll be looking for you. And, and he was like, he just looked around and was like, <laughs> I don't know if it had ever been that easy for him or not, but um, I guess he was expecting to uh, walk a little bit of a tightrope to, so, to see if uh, uh, I needed him to prove something. Well, I didn't need anything except the Lord. The Lord had already provided that. And of course, when he came here, and uh, he, he did a marvelous job, and he and Sister Kaywood were, just became such special special friends to us, and uh, uh, he's one of those kinds of guys that just leaves a hole in your heart, and uh, we love him, and, and our loss is heaven's gain, and he is, he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man, and uh, I know many people were touched just because of his ministry, because of his personality, his testimony, what God did in his life, and uh, we're just, we just want to pray for her and pray for the family. God would help them. Amen. Well, tonight we're going to turn into the Word of the Lord, and we're going to go to Psalm 100. And we're going to just start right, right there with verse number 1, and uh, not really going to be a, a verse-by-verse exegesis tonight, but we are going to uh, look at the first few verses that are there in Psalm 100. The Psalms... The Psalms are songs that uh, were written. They are, they are poems put to music in many cases that uh, are very revealing and are unlocked by uh, much of the New Testament, the Old Testament, and uh, they do some, um, some unlocking in and of themselves. Uh, for instance, this last Sunday night, I preached on the law of substitution and uh, used uh, uh, Psalms chapter 8, and then the, the verse there in, in Matthew to explain and to, to take the, the depth and the meaning to a greater level and to understand the things of God. You know, sometimes we can, uh, and I don't know how you are at night, but normally I just don't always go around uh, turning lights on uh, when I need to get up and maybe uh, go visit the facilities in the night. And so I'll leave the light off, and I'm depending upon that I haven't moved anything that my wife hasn't moved anything, and the cat is not laying in the way. Uh, because, you know, there's just something about stepping on, you know, a 10-pound cat in the middle of the night that has not been declawed. He will, he will introduce you to those claws, and I, I'm really not, you know, in favor of that. And so uh, you just got to be careful, or you, you might uh, meet. You know, sometimes I get off, my, get my bearings off, and, uh, you might meet a corner or a chair or uh, maybe a bedpost 
those things can be rough. And so we've got to keep our bearings. We've got to have, you know, uh, that, that, that true north in our life. And uh, uh, the Word of God provides that. So we'll be reading from Psalm 100. We're, gonna, we're just going to read the whole chapter. There's only five verses there. So it says, Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. And know ye that the Lord, He is God. It is He that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving, and into His courts with praise. And be thankful unto Him, and bless His name. For the Lord is good, His mercy is everlasting, and His truth endureth to all generations. Praise God. I'm just going to talk to you tonight about being thankful. Amen. And what that means to us. God bless you. You may be seated. And uh, just want to shout out a big happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And those of you that are in COVID jail or in quarantine, pray that God uh, keeps, your hand, keeps his hand upon you. I I am hearing uh, the reports that uh, negative test results are coming back, and so we're very pleased about that and just thankful for that. Has anyone ever heard the phrase that no good deed goes unpunished? Well, sadly, this is too often a true statement, and the, re the reason is too often true because those who the good deed is bestowed upon are unthankful. There are many, many unthankful people in this world, and unthankfulness is is actually turned into a an epidemic in our world and uh, we've seen lots of the the jokes i think they call them memes now they they make pictures and there's that one cat that is famous uh with the uh, the blonde-headed woman that's hollering at him there's there's so many good truths that people have put together to to come out on this and uh, but it but it lets us know that unthankfulness uh, is flourishing and I'm sorry to use a positive word in that, but that's the way that it is. Second Timothy chapter 3 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul, in his address to Timothy, his son in the gospel, he gave a warning, he gave a stern warning, and he gave uh, enlightenment to us as to what we should be able to see here in the last day. It says this, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. And here the Apostle Paul, in his writings to Timothy, he is warning that in the last days there would come a spirit. Everybody say spirit. There would come a spirit into the world that would cause much trouble for the church. Here in verse 2, he tells us that among the lovers of their own selves would be the covetous, the boasters, the proud, the blasphemers, the disobedient, the parents, and the unholy would be those people that are unthankful. Now, we may never expect that unthankful people would receive such a hard judgment, but is being unthankful really such a bad thing? If it is, then why put it right before unholy in verse 2. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 helps us to understand a little bit of the attitude that we should uh, be, be following. The Bible says to follow peace, follow peace with all men and holiness. You know, in the last year we have, and, and you know, really longer than that, we have suffered at an unholy rank and an unthankful rank in our world today that they are, they are very selfish. They are very uh, bent towards their own wants and their own needs. And so it is, it is with this here, this lack of holiness that would keep one from seeing the Lord. Amen. And what would be the result of being unthankful? Well, one of the things... Uh, is true is in every circle, and that is that not everyone appreciates what you do for them. Now, I did uh, 
I was looking back some of my notes, and this is usually the time of year that we uh, receive uh, food items, and then we, we would be able to take those out to folks. And I was just reading one of uh, the memories that I have, and it was someone that was very, very thankful. It was about 11 years ago, and uh, uh, the person that expressed this uh, expressed love towards the church express love towards the leadership of the church in that uh, there was it was a woman's mother that had said that they really didn't know what they were going to do they didn't know how they were going to get ends to make ends meet but through the end of the month and uh, let alone have a Thanksgiving dinner and then somebody from the church they heard a knock on the door and it was somebody from the church that brought in a bounty that made the way for the rest of that month, and then help be a blessing to give them something that they, they could eat and that they would be able to celebrate. You know, I, I just believe that it is a wonderful thing that people today, and I am hearing, I don't want to say rumors because I know some of these things are actually happening right now, but there are folks that are already lining up. They're asking, are there children? Are there, are there some that can be helped? And uh, I'm thankful to say that, you know, that there, are, there is a heart among people, even amongst everything that's going on right now, there are people with good hearts that want to help other folks. And uh, as long as the church is in the world, I believe that that will continue. But I believe that darkness is growing across the face of this earth. And I don't want to paint a gloomy picture because the church of the living God, amen, is still the light of the world. Amen. Jesus is the light of the world. And he actually told us that we were. He said, you are the light of the world. And we don't need, we need, to, we don't need to take our light and put it under a bushel, into, underneath some sort of canopy device that would, that would keep the light on the inside. And see, that's, that's part of that problem. You know, we just think about being on the outside and we put it down over the light and it just kind of it, it dims it. It may not completely... Uh, dampen it out, darken it completely. But, but have you ever thought that, you know, if one would be on the inside and then we would pull, if you will, the, uh, the, the covers over or uh, the lampshade, what it would be like on the inside? Well, we can stay on the inside and we can enjoy all of the blessings and the light that we possess. But that is not what God called us to do. God called us to be uh, uh, set upon a mountain, upon a hill. God called us to, to be the light of the world. Amen. He called us to be the salt of the, of the earth and to, and to help people. And so uh, we've got to understand, amen, that some people may not enjoy and they may not be thankful for what's done uh, for them. But what we need to understand is that we're not always doing it for them. We're doing some things from the Lord. And in fact, you know, uh, you can read that, that when we, we do something, we do it as unto the Lord. You know, that really helps sometimes when people don't appreciate, when people look at what you do for them. And it's almost sometimes uh, there might be a slap. And I'm not saying the good people that we're around, but uh, there are some people that don't appreciate uh, what has been done. And we've got to be careful that we do not enter into that group in any any stretch of our imagination. Amen. No matter how hard you try to please some people, they are never going to completely appreciate what you have done or at least the effort that you have put into something. There are some people in this world and even in, I would hate to say, the church. I don't believe in our church, but who are simply unthankful people. Unthankful people. I've heard people pray for their food and say, for these gifts, we ask you to make us truly thankful. And you see, that's, that's one thing. There's, there's a delight in my life, at least right now, is that whenever we get down uh, as a family and we're going to pray, and we'll say, well, who's going to pray? And always that little boy, Jonathan, says, I'll pray. He wants to pray. And uh, he'll say, oh, Je Lord Jesus, thank you for this food. And the prayer is, is simple, but I believe it's powerful. And, you know, uh, 
Some people may say, well, that's a child's prayer, and, and maybe we need to pray again, but I, I don't think that way myself. I, I look at that, and the Bible said that Jesus said this, to suffer the little children to come unto me. And if that's the case, and if he would pull them up into his lap and love them and cherish the things that they say and even challenge us to become like the, the little child, you know, and there's a lot of things that we can glean from the Lord's words there. Because, you know, children don't try to overcomplicate things. Children don't try necessarily to impress people. If they want something, they'll just flat tell you, I want this. Papa, I want, a, I want McDonald's. Okay, baby. We'll, we'll, we'll get some McDonald's. Well, I want it now. He doesn't go into a big oratory. It's just straight and to the point. But a lot of times when we get a little bit of time, let's use that word, not age, let's say time on us, you know, we start to overcomplicate things, and, uh, and, and our pride gets in the way. You know, children, children don't have a lot of that pride thing going on. Pride is something, well, the Bible compares it to, well, what does it compare it to? Anybody know? The Bible compares pride to leaven or yeast. And what does yeast need? What does leaven need? It needs time to rise. Well, you know what? Little children come, and they are just, you know, when he gets down and he prays, this isn't, this isn't trying to impress anybody. Oh, God, I thank you for the Nintendo Switch that you're going to get me as I pray for my food right now. That, those kinds of things don't have, oh, God, thank you for the new car I'm going to get for my, for my graduation, you know, that, those things don't happen yet. It's one at a time. You know, and that, that old song that, that we used to sing, one day at a time, sweet Jesus, is all I'm asking from you. If we can ever pull back, you know, the planning that we have and, and the goals and, and the comparisons that we make one to another, you know, I think that we would be so much farther ahead. Praise God. And so when we look at children, we can see you know, the innocence that's inside of them. We can see, you know, the, that the Lord is working in a way, and there is a dependency upon Him. And so, you know what? I never forbid the little fella. I don't ever try to overpray him. Um, I know that we have uh, holiday things, and, and, and those things are great, but I never want to minimize the faith of a little child. I want that little boy and all the children in our church to grow up and to know that God values their prayers and that they are important in the kingdom of God. If we ever start and go to the point to where, the, where you know, they've got to come up to a certain sense and, and a certain level, you know what, I think that we're in trouble and we're teaching them something wrong. I don't ever want to come to the point to where, you know, in, in a delivery of a message that, you know, one can become so eloquent that, that nobody else can stand up to that, you know. And I know that there are some orators in this world today, but, you know, I, I think that if we begin to measure ourselves that way, that we become in trouble. You know, uh, the message is about preaching the Word of the Lord. And I think we've all got to be careful that we don't add anything of us and our spiritual pride. If we try to put our spiritual pride into a message, I believe that God will back away from that. I think that, that uh, and, and I believe it, I have seen it, and I, I, I don't want us to go there, but I, I think that there, when we allow thankfulness to come into our spirits and our souls to be saturated with it, that God begins to do things in our lives that only He can do. And I'm here to tell you today that only God can save a soul. Only God can draw on somebody's heart. We may have the best words in the world. We may be, uh, speak with eloquence. And Paul said it very well in uh, 1 Corinthians, I, I believe, 11 or 13. He says, though I speak with the, the words of men and angels and, and, and have not charity, that I am nothing. And you can go through that whole chapter, and, and there is that, that spiritual nature of the things of God versus the spiritual pride that can come into one's life. Amen. We've got to shun those kinds of things. We've got to allow uh, our spirits to be, to be saturated, to be, to be just uh, completely overwhelmed and overcome, amen, with, with the Lord and 
the love that we have for Him. Praise God. Being thankful is not a natural state of mind for most people. Being thankful comes from knowing want. From knowing want. If you've ever had to wait on something, if you've ever had to save for something, if you've ever had to uh, sit back and just uh, endure pain, and pain sometimes, you know, we, we, none of us want pain, but pain teaches us something. Pain, once we go through pain and have lived through pain, there is something when we come out of the other side, there is a thankfulness that is there. Amen. Some people never really receive uh, the relief that they would really like to experience in this world. And that's why I'm, I'm glad to say that, that we don't put our hope just in this world, but we put our hope, amen, in the world that is to come. It comes from not having. A woman will be thankful for the husband she has when she understands what it means to not have a good husband. Amen. A man will be thankful for the job that he has when he has gone through a long period of time when he does not have or has not have had a job. A man, a man uh, will be thankful for the wife that he has when he's gone through a long period of time and when she no longer has uh, or he no longer has his wife. There's just something about it. It's, you know, you, they say that you really don't understand uh, what you have until that moment when you don't have it. I heard somebody say it this way as well. They said that, that, that it's hard to appreciate, amen, what one does not, what ha one has until that very moment when it becomes history. And so we've got to understand, amen, that God in our lives, hallelujah, and knowing Him, the power of His resurrection and in the fellowship of His suffering, was not something that the Apostle Paul said lightly. It was something that he was willing to lay his life down for. And so, knowing that Jesus, when he was on the cross, and he uttered those words, it is finished. He purchased our salvation. He paid the penalty. He paid the debt that none of us could ever, ever pay. Going on, being broke teaches you how to be thankful. Being sick teaches you how to be thankful for painless days. Near-death sicknesses teaches us how to be thankful for each and every day. Being lonely teaches one how to be thankful for someone who goes out of their way to be their friend. And thankful people are usually people who have been down the road of adversity. You know, I, I, I see people and I, we, we, we want to shun adversity. We don't, we don't want that. But we were born for adversity. We've got to know that. Uh, someone wrote a song years ago, Born to Die, and it talks about all of the things that Jesus went through. You know, thinking about what the Lord went through, he, the Lord didn't come to this world to make a show of who He was. He didn't come into this world to tell us how important uh, He was. But, but when Jesus came to this world, He came to not only tell us, but to show us how, how utterly valuable we were to Him. To think that the Lord of glory would, would allow Himself, when He came to this world, He deserved the most awesome entrance this world had ever seen. Yet, He came to a stable. He came and was surrounded by the things of a farming uh, community. He was there, out in the middle of nowhere. That's where He came to. Why? Because there would be people that if he would have come to the high rise, to the towers, to, to uh, the wealthy, they would have never thought that they could attain to those things. And so the Bible says that the Lord made of himself no reputation, but he came as a servant. Amen. There is something about being a servant. Something about being a servant. If you want to be first, the Bible says God's kingdom is not like this kingdom in this world. You know, if you want to be first, then run and cut in the beginning of the line. That's what happens. Or be early. People, I can remember, I don't know how Black Friday is going to be this. This year, I think it's going to be a little bit different. In fact, they're already having, they've been having their Black Friday. Uh, what is it? Uh, Rural King down the street here has been having Black Friday. I'm 
I think since the beginning of October. Uh, Black Friday ads everywhere, and, and you can get your Black Friday, you know, whatever it is that you need. Uh, but I can remember the day when, and uh, my mother-in-law was telling me about it, how when Caitlin was little, we were, I forget where it was, I got up in the middle of the night, I don't know what time it was, but I went up and stood out in the middle of the line, and when I got there, uh, standing out in the cold, got there, there was a huge line. There had been people that were camping out all night. This was in the days, you know, when, when those big screen TVs were just coming out and those games and all the things, and, and, and they were there. And, man, I, I'm telling you, uh, we look at those things, and, and people are looking for things in this life. Why? So that they can get a deal. But I'm telling you, the best deal that you will ever find in this world, amen, will not come at the beginning of a line. But it will come. Amen. When you will allow your spirit to, well, prefer your brother. You know, that's not what a line is about. Uh, if you get somebody to cry and cut in somebody, some lines, it's like, hey, what are you doing, you know? And, and they're looking at you, and they, they're putting their brass knuckles on as, as, they're, as they're eyeing you down. Don't you be cutting in line on me. I got here early. I got this place. I literally, what they're trying to say is, I paid for this spot by being here early. I paid my time to get here. Well, you know what? That is not the way the kingdom of God works. Could you imagine people to get, to get in early in a line, stay up all night, and then when somebody comes, you know, at the last minute, and you just kind of look at them and say, oh, well, I'm sorry. Here, here let it, you go first. If we was going to exhibit the, the nature of the Lord and of thankfulness, here, take my spot. Take my spot. Take, I've been saving this spot for you ever since yesterday morning. But you see, that's not the way that the world works. But you know what? You get somebody that is a giver. You give somebody that can look into somebody else's life, that can, you know, not compare, but can see somebody else's need. Then you have someone, amen, that God can work through. God can bless. Thankful people are usually people who've been down that road of diversity adversity. They are the people who know what it means to struggle, to struggle. Amen. We're living in a day right now where a generation has been raised, at least in the suburbs and in many cities. They've been raised, and they don't know what it's like to, to struggle. All they've ever experienced is they've been given everything to them by parents that had and I'm just here to say that I'm glad that I had parents, amen, that allowed me to work for things. Parents that didn't have everything, that did not and were not able to give me everything. Today I believe that there is a, there is a value that I have in my life. And, and I believe that I'm among some people tonight that, that, that are in the same condition. You know, we're not spoiled. We are not, we have not been uh, just given everything, but we've had to work for some things. And there's something about it. When you work for something, you will appreciate it so much more. You will value it. You will take care of it. There are so many things in this world people don't care anymore. There are people that have not had the world handed to them on a silver platter. They worked hard to get where they're at. They endured much expense and labor to reach a certain place. Amen. They did all they could, and when that failed, they prayed. You know, there is something about it. Amen. I've heard someone say that blessings, amen, uh, don't always come in the easiest forms because most of the time, amen, they look like work and they are dressed in, in uh, overalls. And I would say that that is true. The Bible sets unthankful people apart from unthankful people. It lets us know that to be thankful, unthankful, I'm sorry, to be unthankful is a sin. And more than that, is it is a grievous sin as it should be. The Lord will leave us, amen, to work out our own deal if we are not thankful. It lets us know that to be unthankful, praise God, it is, a, is a separation. There is a line that is there. When someone does something for you, the response of your heart and your lips should be to say, 
thank you. We're living in a day now to where people, uh, they, they feel that they're, they are entitled. and There is a spirit of entitlement. And I'm not just here to knock everybody. Not everybody has the spirit, but there is an element. There is a, and we read it here in the very beginning. I had you uh, repeat that word. There is a spirit, a spirit of unthankfulness. And that's what Paul was talking to Timothy about, was that spirit of unthankfulness. In other words, there is a devil that has a name. Of unth- His name is unthankfulness. And I believe that he leads a team as best that he can to try and teach people, amen, to be unthankful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whether it's God, your next door neighbor, someone in a church, or even a complete stranger, we should express thanks. When someone gives you something that belongs to them, time, money, prayer, love, the response should be that of thankfulness. I remember uh, one time there was a man that came into the church, very precious man, uh, his name is Fred Grundy, and uh, I remember Fr- Brother Fred coming to the church, and, and oh, he, he was just, he was a smiling machine. Those of you that, that knew Brother Fred, he was a smiling machine, always oh, smiled. And I remember walking, him walking up to me one day, and, and uh, I don't remember the particulars of the service or anything, but uh, if, you, if you would happen to look in my closet, I have, I don't know, probably a at least a hundred ties hanging in my closet, uh, just as as a matter of collecting them through the years, and uh, I'm thankful for them. But uh, this one occasion, Brother Fred walked up to me, and he I know he was just making a comment and being kind, but he walked up and he said, "Oh, Pastor, I love that tie." Well, I thanked him very big, and I reached up and I pulled it off from around my neck, and I said, "Here." I want you to have it. Well, then he starts stuttering and back, and I'm saying, oh, no, no, I don't want to take your beautiful tie. And, and, and it was a very pretty tie. It was a very nice tie. But you know what? There is something that I have learned through the years, and that is this, that people are more important than things. People are more important than things. There used to be a deal years ago when I was a young person, I don't know, 18 to 20, to, that, that there was a tie, a certain tie that had a little emblem, a C and an M on the, uh, down towards the bottom. It was embroidered in. It was uh, called Countess Maritize, and they were, they were very sought after, and uh, especially at Bible school. I can remember going to Jackson College of Ministries, and uh, people were just wanted to wear those ties. Uh, Brother Jonathan Urshan, who was our theology instructor, a uh, great preacher of the gospel. He was Brother uh, Urshan's uh, brother. Uh, he, he, uh, he always had those ties, and so they were in quite demand. And I can remember going to Goodwill and, and finding Countess Mara ties. People would look at them, and they would be like, oh, wow, you know, this, this is just a cast-off. And they would throw it. You know, it's those kinds of people that they go out, and maybe they buy one or two suits in their life, you know, for a wedding or for some special occasion. And then, you know, after a few years of it hanging in their, in their closet, it's time to get rid of it and the accessories that go with it. And so a very expensive tie, I, I would probably, if I would tell you some of the prices that I had seen on some of those ties, I saw some of those ties were $70, 75 80 90 $100 for one of those ties. And to go into Goodwill and pick one up for a buck... I'm telling you what, you felt like you just hit the, a jackpot, you know. It was, it was awesome. But that day, Brother Fred came up, I pulled it off, and I refused. I wouldn't take it back. There was something about it. I just felt to do that. Well, it wasn't too many months later that Brother Fred passed away. And uh, when I walked up and I, I looked in at his body, you know, to pay right my respects, there laying in that coffin was Brother Fred. And guess what? He had around his neck, he had that tie that I had given to him. You know, there is nothing uh, in, in my heart that I can think of that would touch me anymore. To know that someone valued 
Someone valued something that you had done for them. Was it the tie? No, that's not what was important. But there was something that was very, very special. Amen. Ephesians 5 and 20. If we can go there, please. Ephesians 5 and 20 in the New Testament. It's a race to see who will find it first, the computer or me. And I didn't win today. 5 and 20 says, Giving thanks sometimes for all things. No, it says, Giving thanks always for some things. No. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. There's a value in that. There's a power in that. Praise God. And everything, every good day, every pay raise, every good doctor report, every help, every encouragement, every big and every little thing that encourages and blesses our life, we should be thankful to God for. It is a spirit. If thank unthankfulness is a spirit, do you think thankfulness is a spirit? I think it is. Here's what I believe. I believe that the devil has concocted, has made, ha has worked to develop a counter, a counterfeit from everything that God would do. And so if there is a spirit of thankfulness, I guarantee you that one of the things that the devil would do when he begins to organize and to set up his kingdom is to set up one that's unthankful. So we need to have that, that spirit. We need to have that accompanying us in our lives every day. Every big and every little thing that encourages and blesses our life, we should be thankful to God for. Without that thankfulness, we almost assuredly hinder the working of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Amen. God, you know, says that, that He resists who? The proud. But he gives more grace to the humble. There is something about being thankful that attracts God. I, I've, I've kind of taken on a, 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 a doctrine here recently that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe that. Hallelujah. And I also believe, amen, that God blesses thankful people. I don't know about you, but I want to be blessed. I want to be blessed. I don't want to be blessed by the devil. He is not a blesser. Amen. He is a thief, and that's what Jesus said. He was a thief from the beginning. Amen. He's a thief from the beginning, and he will steal and kill and to destroy everything and every one of us. He wants to destroy our souls. Luke 17. And we're going to read a few verses here. We're going to read 12 through 19. And this is a story of the lepers. I preached on here this recently. And it says, And he, as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers, which stood afar off. Now, if there was anybody that would probably had a spirit of unthankfulness hanging out around them, it was probably these men. They were suffering at the hand of a disease that was destroying their flesh. There was no hope, amen, literally, that they would ever be healed. There was no hope. You know, when they would look at their appendages and they would, they would see fingers falling off and, and literally parts of their body rotting, you know, and, and I'm not to, to bring a gruesome picture here to you too much tonight, but just enough so that we can be thankful if there was anybody that, that could have been accompanied by an unthankful spirit, it was they. But look at verse 13. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master. They did not approach him with, hey, you. Look at me. Come here and smell this. Come here and look at this. It, that, wasn't, that wasn't the case. They addressed him as Master. They called him Messiah. Yeshua, Yeshua means Jehovah has become my salvation. 
In other words, I know that you are the fixer. I know you're the one that can do and address my problem. And I believe that they were saying some other things. They were saying something like this, Lord, I want you to know, look at this, but I have protected my spirit. I have not allowed the enemy to come and to destroy my spirit. And I'm here to tell us tonight, we've got to protect our spirits. Not just in this time that we're living in. Not just in a time of looting and rioting and all of the, the, the stuff that's going on. We've got to protect ourselves with the daily things in life. We cannot let, amen, jealousy get a hold of our spirit. It will cause us to become bitter and to become unthankful. We've got to be thankful. We've got to protect our spirit. I believe that these lepers have protected their spirits. Amen. And when they saw him, notice, they said, have mercy on us. Have mercy. They knew that there was a dispenser. There was one there that could give them what they needed. And when he saw them, he said unto them, go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God glorified God. The writer understood what was going on, understood that this was a man thanking God, not the second person in the blessed Trinity because there was no such thing. Look at verse 16, and it says, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where? Pray thee, are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Notice, Arise, go thy way. Watch, look at his last phrase here. Thy faith hath made thee whole. I'm here to suggest to you tonight that thankfulness and faith are supernaturally attached. There is a mixture that I believe that is there. If it is thankfulness that brought this man back and Jesus looked at him and said, Go thy way, could it be that our thankfulness becomes the fuel for our faith? Oh, hallelujah. I hope you get a hold of that right there. I'm not jumping up and down. I'm not screaming. I'm not doing cartwheels or, or somersaults or anything else. But there is something about being thankful. You really want something in your life. You really need something. Throw a little bit of thankfulness in there and see what happens to your faith. Faith, amen, and thankfulness is an expression of faith. Praise God. Who was it? James said, you show me your, your faith without your works, and I'll show you my faith by my works. Notice what this, this leper did. He came and he fell down at the, faith, at the feet of Jesus, and he worshiped him. Isn't that what it says? He came, he fell down on his face, giving him thanks, and he was a Samaritan. You know what? It doesn't matter what nationality. It doesn't matter what your status is in life. If you come and fall down at the feet of Jesus, everybody stands at the same level at the feet of Jesus. There's no big eyes, no little U's. Praise God. What an amazing miracle. What, a, what an amazing testimony to think that, that thankfulness at this time of the year. And I, I almost think that, and, and if we're not careful, we will, we will even begin to think that Somehow, our forefathers that, that allowed this nation to establish a holiday dedicated to thankfulness, we'll, we'll just think that somehow somebody stumbled on to something. Now, whether they did or not, I, who am I to judge? I'm not anybody's judge, but here's what I will think. I, I don't want to wait until I am an old man to come to the point to where I realize thankfulness and its power. Thankfulness will change your life. Thankfulness will give you power with God. Thankfulness will give you, listen to me, will give you power with other people. We receive. We receive in our spirits. We receive in our lives. 
that good fortune. And people will look into us, and we will receive favor from them. We will receive it in return in love, in gifts, in blessings. And all it takes is having a spirit of thankfulness. Well, praise God. I, I hope that somehow tonight, just looking through these verses, looking through these, these few scriptures, these few thoughts tonight, I'd like to encourage you to make an expression of thanksgiving. You know, one of the greatest forms we have right now in this day and age that we're living in is, is Facebook, is the media, is, is a, you know, if you, can, if you can express your thankfulness, if you can send a card to someone else, you know, we've gotten out of, uh, well, some people have gotten out of the uh, business of sending Christmas cards and explaining and expressing our loves to one another. And I've heard some people say, you know what, we're living in a day right now where we need something more. Cards are so valuable. I know that I haven't been the one that's had my hip replaced, but I tell you what, every card that my wife receives in the mail from someone, the gifts that people have brought, it, it makes my heart swell. It's almost as if, as if I have um, received it as well because I know what it does to her heart. I look at her and I watch her when someone sends her card. I dare not open it. I dare not. Because those things are precious. How precious is it when a little one comes up to you and says, thank you, or an elder comes up and says, thank you. There's just something about it, folks. And I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you. Everything that's going on, don't forget thankfulness. Don't forget thankfulness. Invite that spirit into your life. Invite it. Lord, send thankfulness into my spirit. Pray and ask God for it. You know what? He will send thankfulness into your spirit. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. I want to I wanna thank you for taking just a few moments during your busy week. People are trying to stuff five days worth of work plus two months of shopping plus everything else into these few days. And then we're going to kick off whatever it is, the race towards Christmas. But I'm so glad that you took a moment tonight to come to offer thanks. Why don't we right now, why don't we just, why don't we raise our hands in a gesture of thanksgiving to the Lord and just take a moment. God, I love you. Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you and I thank you, God. I thank you for these beautiful people that you brought into my life. I thank you for these beautiful people in this church here in Zanesville. God, for the beautiful people that are, that are all over the world, Lord. God, I thank you for the spirit of thankfulness. And, and God, I pray, I rebuke the spirit of unthankfulness. God, don't let it come into us. Don't allow us, Jesus, to to welcome it, to receive it, to suffer it, to allow it to be in our lives. God, somehow during this, this time, this week, Lord, allow, allow thankfulness to become a part of us. Let us understand. Give us an understanding. Give us wisdom, God, that we might live in your grace. God, I pray it and I seal it in your name, Jesus, and I bless you tonight. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Everybody said, thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I pray you have a happy Thanksgiving and that God just blesses you richly and that you overeat. God bless you.